Hello, I'm Patrick O'Malley, recorder teacher at the Music Institute of Chicago. Welcome to this very brief introduction to the recorder. It's my favorite instrument in the world because of its sweet, pure, and charming tone. Here's part of a beret by Handel on the alto recorder. How does it work? The recorder is a cousin of the flute, which is played sideways rather than in front. Both instruments create sound by splitting air without any vibrating reeds. The recorder has two parts, a whistle, which creates the tone, and a tube, which gives different pitches by opening and closing the holes. I'm essentially lengthening and shortening the tube. Recorders come in a lot of different sizes. Uh, the most common are soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Most young students begin with a soprano recorder because it has a comfortable size for small hands. Here's a classic tune on the soprano recorder. For recorder history, people have been enjoying the recorder for about 700 years. Composers in the Baroque period, including Bach, Handel, and Vivaldi, wrote pieces specifically for the recorder. Now, why is it called the recorder? There are various theories, but no one is completely sure. The word's been in use for hundreds of years in English. In most other languages, the instrument is either called the sweet flute for its sweet sound, or the block flute because of the cedar block that directs the flow of the air. The recorders are made in various woods and sometimes they're even made in plastic like this tenor recorder. Now, in addition to its beautiful sound, the recorder is affordable, portable, and saves space. It's a very social instrument in that the whole family can play it together. This is a great way to begin a lifelong engagement with music. Now, I'll end with a few notes on the bass recorder an important part of the recorder ensemble. Thanks for visiting.